TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel's strategic alliance with the United States is irreplaceable despite periodic differences between Jerusalem and Washington. The Biden administration announces its decision to end any scientific and technological cooperation with Israeli institutions which operate from within the West Bank. Israeli President Yitzhak Herzog spoke with Palestinian Authority Chairman Mahmoud Abbas early this morning to convey Jerusalem's greetings to the Palestinian people on the occasion of the Islamic Feast of Sacrifice, namely Eid al-Adha. Israel's strategic alliance with the United States is irreplaceable, irrespective of periodically fluctuating relations between governments in Jerusalem and administrations in Washington. Hosting a delegation of American Congress members at his office in Jerusalem, Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu revealed to his guests that he had informed the Biden administration about a month ago that China had extended an invitation to the Israeli leader which is scheduled to take place in the near future. The trip to China, a fourth such visit by Premier Netanyahu since assuming his first term in office, will essentially take place before the Israeli Prime Minister had received an invitation to visit the White House. Nevertheless, Netanyahu made it clear to the visiting members of Congress that the security and intelligence cooperation between the United States and Israel is at an all-time high and emphasized that the U.S. will always be Israel's essential and irreplaceable ally. Earlier at the Israeli Parliament's Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee, Israeli Foreign Minister Eli Cohen recaptured his ministry's unceasing efforts to bolster Jerusalem's international standing over a time period of the past six months. There are a lot of questions about developments in our region. We are following with concern Iran's diplomatic entrenchment. We won't discuss the security issue, but Iran's diplomatic activities in our region. There are many questions about Russia and Ukraine, including nuances related to our policy. Therefore, we are looking forward to this discussion. During the past six months, we acted to advance breakthrough achievements for the sake of the State of Israel. We visited Sudan to lay a foundation for a peace agreement. You joined us in Ukraine for a very important visit, which places us as part of the Western Bloc in the context of that same visit. Our activity in Turkey, flights above Oman, a trade agreement with the United Arab Emirates, questions related to visa, the Iranian file, and you also cited additional countries. We observed during this period a very significant establishment of Israel in Central Asia and countries in which our presence was indeed, in many cases, limited. There were also important visits in Southeast Asia, which we will elaborate on in the closed session. I'm also delighted to tell you that we are already engaged in relations with a number of countries with which Israel has no diplomatic relations for the purpose of enlarging the Abraham Accords. This was supposed to be part of the Negev Summit, which was scheduled for next week, yet probably postponed to September. We ended the crisis with Poland, which is a NATO member state, and we have many challenges related to the Iranian issue, etc. Minister Cohen further noted that on his way to this meeting, he held a phone conversation with his British counterpart James Cleverly, who updated him on the British Cabinet Office's intention to pass legislation banning the anti-Israeli Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions Movement, or BDS, along with other organizations which boycott the State of Israel, a decision warmly welcomed by the government in Jerusalem. In contrast, the Biden administration has decided to renege a decision by the Trump administration, effectively ending any scientific and technological cooperation with Israeli institutions, which operate in geographic territories which came under the administration of Israel after the 1967 war. 
the United States strongly values scientific and techno technological cooperation with Israel. Uh, and robust scientific and technological cooperation with Israel continues. Um, the State Department recently circulated foreign policy guidance to relevant agencies in the United States government, advising that engaging in bilateral scientific and technological cooperation with Israel in geographic areas which came under the administration of Israel after 1967 and which remain subject to final status negotiations is inconsistent with U.S. foreign policy. Uh, I want to make one thing clear, that the guidance is reflective of the longstanding U.S. position going back decades, um, uh, reaffirmed by this administration that the ultimate disposition of the geographic areas, um, uh, which came under the administration of Israel after 1967, is a final status matter. Uh, essentially, we are reverting to U.S. policy to longstanding pre-2020 geographic limitations on U.S. support for activities. Uh, uh, in those areas. The announcement to effectively sanction Israeli institutions, which includes Yariel University, among others, coincides with an Israeli announcement to approve an additional 5,700 housing stars throughout Judea, Samaria, and the Jordan Valley, a decision which evidently frustrates the Biden administration, which openly regards Jewish presence in the so-called West Bank regions as an impediment to the internationally aspired two-state solution to the Israel-Palestinian conflict. I can assure you that privately um, uh, uh, we say this directly to Israeli officials, uh, that we believe that settlements are an impediment to a negotiated two-state solution along 1970, 1967 lines, which ultimately um, we believe is the best way to resolve the Israel-Palestinian conflict. The State Department further seized the opportunity to reiterate its condemnation of all acts of extremist violence, regardless of whether these attacks are perpetrated by Israelis or Palestinians. We condemn all acts of extremist violence and incitement to violence, whether they be either Israel or Palestinian, um, and we remain steadfast in our work to promote de-escalation uh, and beyond this an environment in which Israelis and Palestinians alike are afforded equal measures of security, prosperity, yes, and dignity. Do you believe that? It is important to know that Israeli President Yitzhak held so-called Palestinian Authority Chairman Mahmoud Abbas earlier today to convey his greetings on the occasion of the Islamic Feast of Sacrifice, or Eid al-Adha in Arabic. During their conversation, the Israeli head of state seized the opportunity to emphasize the importance of a forceful, persistent war against terror, incitement and hatred, and further underscore the horrendous price and pain which terror inflicts upon bereaved families and Israeli society as a whole. The president reiterated further the need to act fiercely to thwart terror which harms individuals, families and communities, as well as the chance to live peacefully, side by side, in the region and the broader Middle East. Moreover, the president also underlined his unequivocal denouncement of the recent assault on innocent Palestinians by a marginal group of Israeli extremists. It is worth noting that while Palestinian media quoted Israeli media to report on the conversation between Herzog and Abbas, the Palestinian Authority proper stopped short from releasing a statement on the exchange. Moreover, the Palestinian Authority's failure to assert control over the northern Samaria region is forcing Israel to so-called alter the equation, a move which Premier Netanyahu elaborated on during a speech to the Israeli parliament's plenum. We are in the midst of a struggle against terror, and this struggle continuously demands of us to precede our enemies, which shouldn't be belittled, because there is no absolute power, there is only relative power, which demands of you to innovate and to precede the enemy and frequently to alter the equation. While citing once more the change of the equation by utilizing more lethal methods in dealing with terror in the Gaza Strip, recent events throughout the West Bank with chief focus on the northern Samaria district have prompted an Israeli response. A terror cell left Jenin with the intention to harm our forces near Jalama. While they exited the vehicle, the eye in the sky eliminated them with an unmanned aerial vehicle. This is yet another change in the equation.
However, it does not mean that terror sits idly by, it also bolsters. The question is, who will precede the other? We eliminated over 100 terrorists, eliminated, arrested, however, the most were eliminated. Whoever murders or harms us will find himself in other place or the other, or to the grave or to prison. Most of them go to the grave. Is this enough? No. What does it do? It does, because a large part is not organized, it is spontaneous, which is termed as lone terror or terror cells. Each of them says that it happened to their predecessors, but they will manage to evade it. However, when he does not evade, it lessens the potential for terror. Alongside Israel's deliberate war on terror, which once again included extensive counter-terror operations, as part of which 10 suspected terror operatives were apprehended overnight, Premier Netanyahu also seized the opportunity to vigorously condemn any attacks against commanders of Israel's separate security branches, while in tandem voicing outrage over repeated attacks by marginal groups of radicals who target both Israeli forces and uninvolved Palestinians alike. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. If you're blessed by our productions and would like to help sustain TV7 Israel's ongoing operations, which are exclusively donation-based, please consider making a financial contribution. You can do so via our website at www.tv7israelnews.com. Separately, I would like to encourage you, pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, as well as for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Essen wishing you an Erev Mevorach, and God willing, we'll see you again tomorrow at the same time.